Welcome to the InLink Optimo how-to series of self-help videos. Today's topic is using Optimo's powerful features in a DesignSpark RS Components environment. This short video will cover the following topics. How bombs are imported into Optimo for processing. How to prepare a basic work order. Creating an RFQ and executing it via the EDI functions from the RS Components website and finally submitting the PO for the required parts. DesignSpark, a free PCB and schematic capture solution provided free of charge by RS Components, was used to prepare the simple prototyping interface board for the Raspberry Pi mini computer system. The parts report created by DesignSpark will be used to purchase the necessary parts through the RS Components website using Optimo's powerful EDI functionality. Since DesignSpark, as well as other schematic capture applications, have the ability to generate different reports, parts lists, and or bills of materials, it is important to try and use the same format where possible. Here are some guidelines to follow to ensure the importation of the data is simple and accurate. Ensure all cells to be imported are populated with some type of data. If the information that is in a partially populated column is important for the components they address, simply add a character into the empty column cells to ensure all the cells have data in them. If the data is not required in the imported bill of materials, simply delete the column from the bill of materials prior to importing it into Optimo. Since DesignSpark, for example, provides means to customize the reports generated for the projects, the bill of materials generated for importing into Optimo can be customized to include only the information required. This will significantly reduce the time it takes to prepare a bill of materials and import them into Optimo. Optimo allows you to save configurations for the bomb to import. Maintaining a consistent BOM format will remove the need to go through the initial configurations as required to import a BOM for the first time. For example, once a configuration is created for a particular DesignSpark report, the information is simply pasted into Optimo and easily imported with just a couple of mouse clicks. Multiple configurations can be created so BOMs created by different reports in DesignSpark as well as other CAD programs can be managed efficiently. Let's take a look now and see how this is done. There are two ways to bring data into Optimo. The first way is to copy the data from your Bill of Materials file and paste it directly into the Optimo import wizard. The second way is to import the entire file into Optimo. The supported formats for this method are CSV and TXT. Excel formats are not currently supported. The method used in this demonstration is the copy and paste method. It is important, however, to remember that the end result of either method is going to be the same. To import a BOM, the first thing you need to do is open the BOM file by clicking on the BOM file icon in the toolbar. Next, we need to click the green plus icon in the icon tray at the bottom of the page to add a new BOM. Give your new BOM a name and click OK when done. Select the contextual menu icon at the bottom of the window. Select Import Items. Do not select BOMs as this is to import the list of BOM names during initial setup. If this is the first time you are importing this style of BOM layout, you can save the configuration for subsequent use. Simply enter the configuration file name and click Save. Since we are using the copy-paste method in this example, we simply select the clipboard as a data source. To paste the data into the Optimal system, simply click on the Paste button underneath the clipboard. Note that the eraser icon is available if you wish to erase the current data from the system and repaste or paste new data in its place. Since I already have a configuration for this type of bomb import, the system tells me it's ready for import. Let's go through the steps to see what's required to get to this point. Click the Next Step button at the bottom to go to the next step. The Data to Import window will show the data that was pasted from the clipboard. The General Information area provides settings based on how the data is managed, from how the columns are set up to the first and last lines of data to be processed. These settings need to match those of your data set. The Import Field section is very important. This is where the columns from the Data to Import are mapped to the fields within the database tables. The Part key is the most important field and must be part of the mapping process. In our example, the RS Components part number is used as the parts key. An important task to perform is the mapping of the fields to the columns of data. To map a field to a column, select the fields to the pointers on the field you want to map and click on the column you are mapping to. Click the camera icon to complete the mapping. This is done for all the columns in the data. Note that the part key and the supplier reference are mapped to the same column. This is OK as this value is used as the search key. To verify you set the mapping correctly, simply double-click on a column number in the Import Fields area. This will highlight one cell of data in the column mapped to that field. If nothing highlights, then an error was made, so you'll have to do it again. 
If a column repeatedly does not map, it is most likely due to some empty cells being copied into the system. Verify the data you are importing to make sure this is not the case. This normally occurs more frequently when you import an entire file as you may not look at the contents prior to importing it. Another important window is the matching table window. Although there is nothing currently in this table, the table will display information on parts that are missing from the database but in the BOM that's being imported or parts that might have multiple correspondences. Once we go to the next step, we're provided with two choices, either test and do not import or test and import. Click on the test without doing it button to ensure that everything is correct. As you can see, we're back at the matching table window with information on an unmatched part and a part with multiple correspondences since they are present. Otherwise, test completed would have been displayed. Let's address the part with multiple possible references. Select the part and click on the search button on the right. This will open up the select part dialog window. If we do a search on the keyword, the selection box will display information pertaining to that part. The example here shows the same part but one having a misspelled description. But you could also have multiple parts with different manufacturers depending on what was used as the part key in the import process. Simply select the one you want to move on. Now the entry showing match undefined is there for the sake of the example. I did not include this part in the optimal parts database. There are a few ways to manage this situation. Let's take a look at a couple of them now. First, if the part is required in the project, you can simply open the parts file and use the Optimo browser to search for the part on the RS Components website. Once found, the part is simply added to the database and the import test is redone. Another option is if the part is not required. If this is the case, you can simply select the line and click the Do Not Import Selection icon to remove the item from the bomb during import. Once you have completed the matching process, you can retest the import. If successful, it will display test completed. If this is the case, then click the test then do it button to complete the importation process. The import will be performed and the data will be displayed in the bill of materials file window. If you're going to import other bill of materials with the same layout in the future, prior to closing the import window, save the configuration file by clicking the save button. Once the data has been imported, the status of the BOM can be changed to the required status. Since this will be a prototype, the status has been changed to reflect this. There are a few methods to purchase parts, but for the demonstration, we'll be using a work order. Open the work order file using the work order icon in the toolbar. Click the green plus icon to add the new work order to the list. Give the work order a useful name and click OK when done. Just a quick note that the default work order numbers provided are pre-configured in the user settings and you can choose a numbering convention of your choice. To add the bomb just imported, select the bomb button at the top of the page and then click on the green plus icon at the bottom of the page to add the bomb. You'll see that the bomb we just created is the first one available to add to the work order. Select the bomb and click OK. This helps speed up the process of creating the work order as you do not need to perform a search in many instances. You can see the bomb or the parts associated with the bomb by clicking on the appropriate button at the top of the interface. Other items such as parts or additional bombs can be added to the work order as well. When you're done populating the work order, click OK to close the window. With the work order complete, now we can begin creating our RFQ. To create the RFQ, click on the PO Preparation icon in the toolbar. Then click on the green plus icon at the bottom toolbar to open up the Add function. Select Add Parts from a work order by clicking on the work order icon in the toolbar of the window. As was stated earlier, the last work order that was handled will be the first one in the list to select from to minimize the time to complete the task. Once you click OK, a new window will open and show you what is to be ordered. You'll notice that you can also add bombs and other parts directly to this preparation as well. Click OK to close the window to move to the next step. The system will ask if you want to save the preparation, as this can be used again if necessary. Click the Purchase Order Preparation 2 button to open up the Supplier Selection window. Next, click on the Enter Clustered Edit Mode button at the bottom of the icon tray. Then select RS Components as a global supplier for all the parts in the RFQ. Once this is done, click on the Allow Use of Unreferenced Suppliers button, then click on the green check mark to select RS Components as a global supplier for the RFQ. Just a few more mouse clicks and we're done. Since RS Components will be used exclusively, there will only be one supplier and only one RFQ created. If there were components or other hardware required from a different vendor, this would be managed in this window as well. You can see that the RFQ has been created at the bottom of the page. Simply click OK now to close the window and prepare to send the RFQ to RS Components. 
Select the Edit Order Forms icon in the toolbar to open the RFQ you just created. As before, the last RFQ you handle will be the first order displayed. As you can see, this window provides you with the current information for the parts to be ordered based on the last information received from the RS Components website for the parts in question. To send the RFQ via the EDI functionality, select the context menu at the bottom of the window and select EDI functions and request for quotation. This will launch the automated RFQ request via the website and provide you with the latest pricing information and lead times as required. No user interaction is required at this point. When prompted after the shopping cart is complete, click OK to allow the system to be updated with the current pricing and lead times. The RFQ is now populated with the current data so it can be closed and validated to move on to the purchase order process. Once you are satisfied with the updated information, you can validate the order. Since this order requires small quantities, the system will need a bit more information concerning the allocation of extra stock required due to minimum purchase levels. In this demonstration, we'll simply add the overage to stock, but as you can see, there are many other options available for the user. Also, there is a checkbox provided to address all parts in one single step. Once this is all completed, you can validate the order and move on to the next step. To generate the purchase order, you can do it in the traditional ways of printing and emailing, but it can also be done using the EDI functions of the RS website. This will be the method that we use here. Simply select EDI functions from the context menu and select place a purchase order. The system will automatically generate your shopping cart and prepare your order. As with the RFQ process, the information in Optimo will be updated with latest information during this process as well. After verifying the information, you simply need to select the order button in the browser to order the parts. You can see that the purchase order number generated by the Optimo system is the purchase order number in the web interface and will be used for processing. Finally, the order number that you receive from RS Components will automatically be saved in the Optimal system and allow you to track the progress of the order automatically. This is how simple it is to provide parts for your prototypes and production runs using Optimal.